I know I say this every movie review, but Big Daddy Daffodil is definitely at his all-time best. Well, you're just gonna have to trust me. You don't have to wait very long to find out. Big Papa plays Colonel Sykes, an ex-badass whatever stuff that he usually is. The most decorated soldier in the first Gulf War. Checked your past. You are special forces. He's ex-special forces. The guy's a killing machine. But the major difference is that he doesn't sleep with any naked women. What the hell did you just say? He's around plenty of naked women, but unfortunately for them, he doesn't get to slobber all over them. Yeah, now you owe me some good pussy. <laughs> the movie opens with Big Daddy looking badass with his patented sunglasses and sloppy goatee. He then piss farts around with a gun to let us know he's a specialist. I'm trying to pass down some of the secrets that have made me a master shooter. Sensei Sausage Fingers doing his thing where he's sitting and puffing on a cigar, as he frequently does, as all cultured men do. There's a meeting of bad guys, and you know Sensei Bubbly Balls is gonna s over their parade. Our hero is just casually landing headshots on about 39 people. He can not only do this with a sniper rifle, which is logical, but also an assault rifle, without even having to look in the scope. Why? You know, being a lifelong practitioner of the martial arts, I try to teach everyone not to fight the recoil of the weapon, more to become one with the weapon and let it be an extension of their body. Seagal is pissed off because these blokes are taking all the and with that, the real possibility of all the women. I want you to take me someplace where I can find some or some women. As a man who does his own stunts, Big Papa insisted on not using a green screen or any doubles for any parts of this scene. It's definitely him running in and not a scene cut. And as you'd expect, a stunt double is definitely required to just stand there for a moment in the dark. Why exert yourself, big man? You're right about that. Between the cost of the helicopter and Seagal's fee and lunch allowance, this movie must be some high-budget production. Sue from The Deck Collector makes an appearance as the lead cop in this career-changing flick. Friendship, please. Come on. Okay, come on, please. Listen to this next line when this ex-associate of Seagal stumbles on this cigar stub Big Papa was puffing on. Our first glimpse that Big Daddy spent more time making script edits than actually acting. Smoking cigars now. <laughs> and I thought he was perfect. The Mafia head guy is upset because Sensei Sniffles laid waste to a lot of bad guys. If we do this to us, there's no other cartel strong enough to pull this off. Big Daddy Beefcake eats cartels as snacks before hitting the buffet, bitches. You obviously do not know who you are. Cut to Sensei Sandbag's house where he sits there like a boss and women dance around on poles. Wait, wait, sorry, nope. That's just a standard strip club scene that he insists on because they are essential to the movie. Is this scene going to be obscenely long and drawn out? Of course. Is it likely Big Daddy was perving on the dancers rather than playing his role? Yeah. Am I right that he definitely had a big part to play in including this scene? I haven't been wrong yet. <laughs> Sensei's assistant comes in and tells this fatherless lass that Big Daddy Boner is ready for the next off-screen audition that all women must endure. Get your pants off, Gary. You're on next. Oh, and uh, the scary guy in the back isn't tipping. What does he look like? I don't know. I, I didn't get a good look at him. Did she just call our savior scary and a tight ass? How dare you! Stripping scene goes on for far, far too long. Like, ridiculously long. This scene goes on longer than most of Seagal's combined screen time in actual movies, and that's not an exaggeration. Am I Steven Seagal? Of course. Then Big Papa Gravy Lips gets up. What? Yep. What? And waddles away and blows the entire place up. This guy wakes up hoping it's a dream, but sorry mate, you're actually in this shitty movie. Sensei Lard Tits shows up on the scene of the crime, and like the nimble athlete that he is, disappears like the wind when spotted. <laughs> we then find out how awesome Seagal is, as if we didn't already know, mate. His name is Colonel Robert Sykes. He's a commander of one of the Special Forces' most elite units. His service record is impeccable. Skills in hand-to-hand -hand combat, weapons, 
firearms, explosives. It's unmatched. He's trained to blend into any city, any terrain. And he is using those skills and that training to go after gangs or drug dealers. Then they flat out lie to us, telling us about Sensei infidelity. He doesn't drink, he doesn't do drugs, he doesn't sleep around, and... Bullshit! Seagal takes out the two guys that stole his jar of cookies, but presumably also because of their horrible outfits. Come here, get your ass over here. He still hasn't said a word, mind you. Just pops up and disappears. This knob is seen talking to the women on set, and Seagal will have none of that. There's only one alpha, all part of his code of honor. I'm not all about the money, I'm all about the honor. This guy was obviously trained in the Steven Seagal art of shooting perfectly with every shot. <laughs> but not in the combat aspect, as he allows himself to take some punches. You disappointment. And just like clockwork, Big Daddy turns up and saves the day. Let's just all appreciate the brilliant CGI work on this project. I told you the chopper and Big Daddy used up all the budget. Sensei Snuggles comes in sounding exactly as you'd expect a white, Jewish, pure Mohawk, Italian, Asian, Russian, Mongol to sound. What's wrong with you, man? You're slipping. But you can't check your six. Big Papa explaining to us his plans to essentially save the world as only he can do. Would you give your life to save the world if nobody knew you did it? In a movie starring our hero, there's nothing but high quality dialogue, as you'd expect, especially considering all the characters are based on his life. Yeah, I don't think so. Come on, suck your fk. I don't know, the last time you fing chewed it all up with those teeth. Uh, 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 uh. And Seagal does the toss a move of shooting this guy in the dick. And the next guy also. The last kid gets away unscathed, but they're all erased from existence. I shot him in the I shot him in the I love how Big Papa swiftly pulls his gun away, like a chubby little boy playing army. Pew pew! Stu suddenly has an epiphany and realizes how much he hates the girl and his agent for making him part of this movie. Asshole. Big Papa Pigskin meets with his younger self and gives him some tough love. He who never met a girl he did not try to f a drink he didn't want to drink, a rice he didn't like. He also explains how he maintains those extended lovemaking sessions with women young enough to be his granddaughter. <laughs> hey man, I never went soft, that's what happened to me. It's gonna get hard. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, come. And then he proudly boasts about patriotism. But I'm not sure which country he's talking about. I still love my country. Vladimir Putin. Just in case you were wondering. I'm still an honorable man. I'm a Russian Mongol and I'm Russian. Then Sensei Savior basically declares that he single-handedly abolished slavery and freed everyone. Not in so many words, but it's Seagal. That's exactly what he meant. Slavery was the law, and if it wasn't for men like us standing up, it might still be there. He then continues to really scold his younger self for his past shenanigans, and let's rip. You never went over the speed limit or cheated on my taxes. You drank, you lied, and you cheated. Plus, you fucked. Everything that moved, foreign and domestic. Seagal convinces this guy to be his protege and subsequently makes him do this entire scene sitting down. It's a big part of the job, so you gotta show you can do it. He still does more action seated than Big Daddy does in most movies. Can I laugh in your face? The two main stars of the movie then discuss catching a glimpse of Seagal's d earlier in the change rooms. I don't see anything. It can't be that small. The Mafia boss decides to take a little look around and bask in the glory of being arrested, basically giving Sensei Sniper time to take him out. He's been accused of everything, from prostitution to racketeering to murder. This may be the very last time we see him outside. We flash quickly to 75 miles away where Seagal sits looking both badass and gumpy as hell at his little perch. Now I know what you're thinking. Is it even possible for any man to be that great of a sniper? Well, let's ask him. See how it goes right where I want it? Yes, sir. Right there. Are you really as good as they all say you are? Every once in a while. Seagal is either getting ready to cut up his turkey dinner or slice somebody's throat. Either way, he's eating tonight. Then he pretends that he actually looks where he's shooting rather than just firing randomly. <laughs> 
Big Daddy Drumstick is upset with his documentary film crew, and then he says probably the most intelligent thing he has ever said in a movie. And most coherent. Truth is subjective. Truth is absolute. People are subjective. Finally, our master gives us a hint for the new world order where Segalism will reign supreme. I'm just a man with a plan. Oh, it's a little regime change. Then in a shocking twist, we find out that Seagal does exist, but isn't actually really doing anything in this movie. It's all fictional. So basically, like most of his movies. We've been after the wrong guy. Porter his sights. So even though we know Seagal isn't in the movie, we're supposed to keep buying this Fight Club ripoff nonsense on a rooftop? Seagal gets an itchy hand mid-scene. No need for reshoots. Big Papa takes a moment to give me props for my dedication to him. That was a nice touch, man. That's some cool shit. And then we're treated to a badass fight scene where it's definitely not a stunt double doing all the actual fighting from behind, and Seagal turns up just for the cool posing bits. And one of my favorite scenes is always Sensei snack lunch waving a knife scene. And what can only be described as certainly not a stunt double. All I have to say on this scene is that yes, obviously he did that stunt if he does all of his own walking scenes. Sensei Traitor is almost certainly projecting self-hate in this scene. Your family hates you. Your country's done with you. Some more knife waving before the cops come and then the bomb is set off. No idea why this particular floor on this building was important. It really wasn't. Big Papa blows up the building, himself included, but he doesn't really because he wasn't actually doing any of it. Clearly this movie is too highbrow for me. I don't understand the depth behind it, but why would I? I'm just an idiot striving to be like the Great One. Yeah, I just, you know... Well, that's the end of this masterpiece, Segalians. Big Daddy really wasn't in this movie, but the other guy supposedly died in the fire, but he is still alive at the end. If you can make some more sense of this, let me know in the comments. He wasn't in it very much at the start, but he kind of was at the end. That's the best I can say. I'm, I'm deeply hurt. Your words deeply hurt me. All right, my friends, until we meet again soon, I've got a couple of different videos coming up, but another one with Big Daddy, of course. In the meantime, get some fresh air, kick someone in the gonads, but above all, stay awesome. Peace, legends. When I'm I'm a monster with my sorrow